Hey, friends. So, uh, this morning I had sort of a unexpected breakthrough, in a sense. I was, I was, as usual, this is when these insights hit me. I don't know when I would ever do any thinking if I didn't do yoga and qigong in the morning. Because that seems to be when my mind is open and available for things to register. And I found myself thinking about, you know, so I was working, thinking about Annalise and the work that we've been doing, um, that I've been doing in, 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 in a variety of ways on in, you know, I, I work with her on, on violin. That's one sort of area where we have a very deliberate kind of, um, relationship. But the fact is, this is just constant, you know, she's four years old. So anytime we're interacting, we're, we're learning stuff about each other. And I've been reading this book, Positive Discipline, which is all about how to create healthy structure for kids, healthy boundaries, how, how adults can have, um, can essentially learn to be firm, but, but, but joyful, firm, but, but, but gentle at the same time. And to, and to, to in, reinforce positive behaviors in children and but without letting without letting that tilt into kind of permissiveness or tilt into overly disciplinarian approaches fascinating book and one of the one of the kind of biggest takeaways so far for me is the concept that the author outlines called mistaken goals and mistaken goals are goals that that a child uh, adopts as a strategy for, for, for achieving belonging, recognition, security, love, you know, it's, it's, it's all the, all the sort of big, deep needs of their identity formation at an early age. Um, if those needs for whatever reason are not being met, they can, they'll start to, to have these mistaken goals and they'll start to exhibit behaviors to try to get what they need, but in a way, this is why it's called a mistaken goal, in a way that's ultimately not effective for them. They can never actually get what they want this way, and which is why it's a, called a mistaken goal. And a lot of times, that when a child who's really invested and attached to any of these mistaken goals, will be, it, it, it'll manifest as misbehavior will think that oh the child is misbehaving this is this is you know problematic conduct or whatever um but the author points out you know or one of the one of the one of the early kind of outgoing premises of this approach is that a child who's misbehaving is actually a discouraged child for whatever reason the child doesn't feel they can get belonging significance love in a healthy way, according to according to methods that are contributing, that are generous, that are acknowledging, that are respectful, that are, you know, nonviolent, um, in a normal and healthy way, they don't feel like they can get what they need, so they have to tilt into these other behaviors in order to in order to redress the deficit that they feel. And if we understand that all misbehavior is that in some form then we have a whole new way of, of, of interpreting that behavior and then of responding to that behavior. Because if that behavior is something that is bad and it just needs to be stopped, we need to control it, keep a lid on it, smother it, then that's one approach to misbehavior. And of course, the, kind of the whole point of this book is that approach doesn't generally work. It doesn't actually solve the problem of the behavior usually and even if it does a lot of times you know the the author has this great phrase called beware of what works because what works in the moment 
may actually be a really horrible strategy long term. Because if you think that doing this kind of whatever disciplinary or crackdown approach works because it's stopping the behavior, that is a far cry from meaning that the behavior will, will stop recurring over the long term. That's two completely different things. Um, and furthermore, we're also missing an opportunity for the child to actually learn alternative behaviors, to actually learn solutions, and to actually integrate ways of engaging that really will get them what they're looking for, and that really will work long term, and that really are positive and wholesome and, and healthy for them to, you know, to a, a kind of behavior that works. So this is just something that I've been uh, kind of fascinated by and having a child, you know, having a four year old in my life is <laughs> it's a, it's the most amazing thing in the world. Um, and it provides ample opportunity to, to, to see this stuff in action and to feel, oh, you know, one of the other brilliant things that this uh, author has pointed out is that our own emotions in a given circumstance, the, the adult parent, parent's emotions, will tell us which of the mistaken goals the child is pursuing. Because our emotional response will very often be a it'll be in response to the behavior and the behavior will somehow be a misbehavior or a varying degrees of sort of transgression but like not a not a healthy and sort of integrated happy wholesome behavior so we're going to have a response to it and if we instead of acting on that response or simply having it and feeling it and re either repressing it or doing something about it if we actually know that our response is an insight is almost like now I, my own emotions give me the capacity to read my child's mind because if i can read my own emotions i can interpret what has provoked them and i can see and then i can go one layer behind that okay if that's what provoked my emotions where did that come from and before i know it i can i can arrive at my at my my child's or just any other person's mistaken goals. I can figure out where they're coming from that made them, that, that, that caused them to exhibit a behavior that, that elicits this in me. And I've spoken about this on my post before because it's something that I was really excited about to discover. Before I ever read this book, I discovered this in working with my coaching clients and piano students. I realized what I feel right now is a message from them to me. It's, it's not something that they're saying it's not, most of the time, it's not even, it's something that they would actually probably prefer to avoid transmitting. It's something that they, if, if they had, if they could, if they could censor this, then they would. They wouldn't let it out because that's 90% of the time, our subconscious stuff that's trying to get out of us, our conscious mind is keeping a lid on it. It's trying to keep, keep that shit down so we don't bring it out and let it explode all over everywhere where I can make a mess. But I learned, oh, when I feel this, I'm being given not just a clue, but like a flashing, uh, uh, you know, almost like a, a blueprint, a schematic of what's going on in them. And so then when I read this book and found out, oh, that's actually, you know, part of the process here in terms of, um, learning how our how our children work i was like this is amazing very inspired to sort of learn all that and my response this morning where i'm getting to with all of this is that you know you start doing this work and you start identifying you know maybe a mistaken goal trying to articulate, and I'm, I'm a klutz at this, believe me. I'm tr I, like, I can already tell this is going to be a learning curve here because how I respond and how consciously I, have, I am able to construct my response as opposed to just trying to manage the behavior. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a toddler. I'm a toddler dad. Toddler dad. I don't know if that actually makes any sense but i'm a toddler at being a dad 
I'm, I'm learning that process and I'm in the beginning of it. But the, but what I've realized already is that one of the things that's so, and this is why, you know, the, the sort of parental child relationship is, is so rich and such a crucible, I think for all involved is that where do I think my child's mistaken goals may have come from? Let's think. Um, maybe from me, <laughs> maybe from my own patterns. So as I'm engaging with my child's mistaken goals and trying to help her, uh, feel acknowledged, feel connected, and feel feel held so that we can come up with a solution that will get her what she wants. The one barrier to, a, to the smooth, seamless execution of my positive discipline expertise is the fact that her mistaken goals probably in some form came from me. That doesn't mean they're the same, but it means that mine have had a role in imprinting hers. There may be some opposites at play there. There may be some similarities at play there. But, but either way, my own mistaken goals are also in the mix here. So when I try to work with her, I, I've got to instantly also look at my own stuff, you know, my own patterns, my own approaches that might, if I were a kid still, might be called a mistaken goal or a misbehavior, you know? Just that we get old enough that people just kind of say, that's just the way so-and-so is. That's just the way Robin is. And we get to the point where it's like, well, you're not a kid anymore. I guess this is what, you know, I guess this is what we got. <laughs> um, but of course, anybody who's done any amount of inner work you know that this stuff can be changed. It may be, it, it may, there may, it may be challenging. It may not be easy to take our mind print and unravel patterns that have been there for a long time, but it is absolutely possible. And being in service, being in a, in a parental relationship to a child that is my entire heart is, you know, goes and there's this great quote from the movie Judy about Judy Garland where she's talking about her kids and she says having kids is like taking your heart and putting it out in the world and letting it walk around on its own <laughs> and I was like that's exactly what it feels like it feels like my heart is over there and I don't want her to you know stub her toe I don't want her to fall down the stairs all the things all the vulnerabilities of this young being feel like they're immediately latched to my heart. They could happen to, they're happening to me at the same time as they're happening to her. Um, one of the beautiful things about being in service in a, to, to, in a relationship like that and being a parent is that we get to look at this stuff and, sh and what she brings up as far as her mistaken goals or misbehavior, whatever it is, is, is illuminating something about her that requires help and assistance and love. And it's illuminating something about me where I may require help and assistance and love that I can give myself because I'm an adult human being now. <laughs> I'm the only person who can really do that for myself anymore. I mean, not that I don't have wonderful friends and partners and parents, but I'm saying, those areas where we need that love and support, it's really kind of our job to give that to ourselves. But I can at least be shown, here's where I need that, right? Here's the area, here's, here's, here's one of my own mistaken goals, a, a behavior that's not effective, that's not helpful for me, and I get to see it because it's being pinged off of my, off of my child right back into my face, and I see it. <laughs> so, anyway... Just one of those, one of those moments of realizing how beautiful and symbiotic the whole process is. Thanks for watching, people.
all the love in the world. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.